Morning everyone, and a Monday morning at that. Back to normality-ish. If you remember from Friday, we found out just as I was on my way to pick up a short stay from the train station on Friday, so I've not really had any chance to think about it since because we've been so busy with our weekend shenanigans, but if you remember from Friday, we got the phone call from the taxi company saying as of this morning, Andy was gonna have a different PA, someone he's never met before, and that person's gonna arrive in about 15 minutes to try and get him in the taxi to go to school. I'm sure it'll be fine. He's had unexpected changes all last week with the taxi company, but this is quite a big one. If it's someone he's never met before coming to the door, there's always that chance that he might refuse to go with them. On the flip side of that, the driver, we've been told, should be the same. And when he came acting as PA last week with a different driver, he went with him fine. So if worst comes to the worst, we might just need to get the driver to come to the door as well. And that should be enough. And he's all about safe people. He likes to be passed from safe person to safe person to safe person. He very rarely, if ever, will agree to be one-to-one -one with someone that he's never met before that he doesn't already trust. So the positive is he knows the driver. He considers him a safe person. We just have to hope that this new PA is nice and that he just wanders off and goes about his business. So that's the plan. I know it can be quite critical of the taxi company at times, especially last week, but the taxi driver himself is a legend and he just gets it. Came to the door with the new PA today. He did all the talking. He's the one who engaged with Andy. He introduced the new person, made Andy feel completely at ease, and he just trotted off to the car with them. Absolutely no problems at all. These, remember, this is the same guy who just over a week ago, Andy left his DS in the car, and he traveled all the way back to deliver it back to us so that we'd have it for the weekend. He's just very, very good. He just gets it. Massive thumbs up to the taxi driver, and hopefully the new PA is gonna be right up there on his level as well. But really, really impressed with him. They're actually a little bit early this morning. It's only 20 to nine, and they already, they've already arrived and they've already gone. So that's the difference that it's gonna make. Not having to have the PA travel all the way from Lincoln every day, I guess. It's a big contrast to when they were late most days last week. Andy was a little bit thrown by the fact that, I don't know why I'm looking back, he's not here, he's gone. Andy, who often sits behind me, was a little bit thrown by the fact that they were here before the advert break and everybody loves Raymond and he kind of, it was a little bit resistant to getting up and going, but just, just went for it, really impressed, success, and now I've got a really busy day of work ahead of me because I haven't really done anything for about three days with all the stuff that's been going on over the weekend. So job number one, edit yesterday's vlog. Job numbers two, three, four, five, six, make videos, make lots of videos. Well, here's a rarity for you. I'm actually leaving the house during the day. The sun's up, this is weird. Finally got a reason for wearing these sunglasses. Barbers. Not today. I don't remember if we mentioned a couple of weeks ago that Anna had picked up her new phone. I'm being sent to the post office to post her old phone. This whole her going out to uni thing while I stay at home being lazy. Not sure I'm on board with it anymore. Okay, can I go back and edit that last bit? That was much less traumatic than trips to the post office usually are. No queue. There's always an hour long queue in there. Clearly, going at lunchtime, which is normally a time of day I avoid going to the post office, is the best time to go because everybody is avoiding the post office. If I'd have gone mid-afternoon like I normally would, they're queuing out the door. I always just assume that lunchtime is the worst time because everyone's going to go on their lunch breaks. What a buffoon I am. The reason I shouldn't be out of the house right now though, even more than my general laziness, the fact that my feet still really hurt from the weekend, is that I should be, all systems go on social media, launching my new channel. What new channel? I hear you cry. To which I respond, tut tut tut. If you followed me on Twitter, at Lelujo, you'd already know all about this. Oh, my hair really is awful, having now been outside. Um, so, the new channel then, is a wrestling channel. Hence, the wrestling shirt, the fact that I'm stood in front of a green screen, I never stand in front of the green screen. I've had to, I've had to put you on a different tripod. Hold on, let's be super fancy. Look at this situation that I've got going on. You are up there, stood on top of my desk, so that I can now stand in front of this green screen. But it's a wrestling channel. It's called Lelujo Wrestling. 
There's a link to it. There should be a link up in one of the corners now. There's definitely going to be a link to it down in the description. And it's already in my favourite channels bit on the homepage of this channel. You should subscribe if you're a wrestling fan. There's going to be videos on there. I'm aiming for seven days a week, just like on both of the other two channels. There's going to be reactions to all of the major WWE TV shows and pay-per-views. So on a normal week, that means on a Tuesday we're going to have a Raw reaction, a Wednesday a Smackdown reaction, Thursday an NXT reaction, some weeks there's a pay-per-view reaction, and there'll be plenty of wrestling, gaming content as well, WWE 2K18, Total Extreme Wrestling, Fire Pro Wrestling World. I'm not going to talk about wrestling too much here, but if you like wrestling, head over to Lelujo Wrestling, that channel launched yesterday in your world. Please subscribe. There you go, we're back on the usual super duper wide angle lens. Now the room's a little bit, that's fine, we can live with that. Because there's one other piece of housekeeping news that I need to make you aware of if you're interested in the other channels. Or well, to be honest, this one's relevant to you even if you're just here for the autism stuff because a couple of days ago on this vlog, I mentioned that I was gonna be doing a 24 hour charity live stream for the National Autistic Society and I gave you a date. That date is now changing, and it's changing because of something that I'm not allowed to talk about yet. But the reasons why it's changing will become clear over the next couple of weeks. Uh, but I'm having to move it. It's no longer gonna be on the 4th of November. And because of clashes with other stuff throughout November, it's actually moving back a whole month. So it's gonna be on Saturday, the 2nd of December. Same structure as before, so it's gonna kick off 12 p.m. Saturday the 2nd of December, run all the way through to 12 p.m. on Saturday the 3rd of December. Apologies for having to move it, but when you see why I've moved it, then certainly if you enjoy the gaming channel, you'll realize it was worth doing. It's still gonna be raising money for the National Autistic Society. There's nothing to stop you donating to the Just Giving page on the 4th of November like you would have done anyway. For the rest of you, it just pushes it all back a month. I hope that's okay. All the details of that are over on the gaming channel. And I promise I won't try and push you onto any of my other channels for the rest of today's vlog. Right, I've got about an hour. I've got work to do. Andy's back soon. New one? Right, can you put your shoes away then, please? What's that? You had a good day? Yes. What did you do today? Is it in all that? Okay, let's have a look at what you did then. Normally I stand in front of the window to get some light, but it's so overcast and weird and gloomy out there because of this storm that's coming over, that it's just it's kind of really weird yellow light. It's a shame the camera doesn't colour correct properly. or well, it does, but I don't know how to use it. I don't know how to use the button. I'll take you outside in a minute and show you and see if it works. But Andy has had a good day in school. He did some lovely reading. Well done on your reading this morning and worked well in maths and literacy and he was happy to take part in a golf session. Have you been playing golf again? Yeah. Do you like golf? Yeah. I think we've got a bit of a golf fan on our hands. That's twice in the last week he's played golf where he enjoyed... Oh, and he, and he also did a music session where he enjoyed singing and playing the keyboard. I know he likes both of those things because he does them at home. All in all, another good day, no problems at all with the taxi. Um, they got home at the same time as the previous taxi. Um, he just went fine with them, he came back fine with them. So, all very positive stuff. Let's go and have a look at this weird storm. Now, if you're not in the UK, you might not have heard that we've got the remnants of a hurricane coming over us. We can't call it a hurricane because of the sea or something. There's a reason, but it's gonna be very strong winds. It's coming in over the west coast overnight tonight into tomorrow, I think. So where we were yesterday, over in Manchester. But right now, this is such weird weather and you just, you can't see it on here because of the camera color correcting. I'm tempted to send the drone up, but as usual, it's not charged. It's kind of a weird gray sky. What do you think of it, Dave? Dave, what do you think of the weather? He's not impressed about it. He's been, he's been scratching at the door and scratching at the window. I think he wants to go and tell the weather off. There's going to be some strong rain and some strong wind in our near future. Sometimes the conversation on my gaming streams goes a little bit weird. One of those, I say sometimes every time, one of those weird conversational twists last week was my preference for only letting the milk touch the cereal when I'm eating cereal at the last possible moment. Someone suggested a product to me. It arrived today. This has been incredibly quick. Um, it's called 
the Eat Me Crunchy and it looks like a dog bowl but basically it's a normal bowl normal cereal bowl but it then has this little ridge and the idea is you put the milk in the bottom of the bowl put the ridge on top of the milk like that and then your cereal on top of that and then there's these tiny two tiny little holes in the little ridge for the milk to come through and this little portion of the bowl here is the only place that milk touches cereal. So as you want a bowl of cereal, a spoonful of cereal, you move it off the shelf into the milk and then straight into your mouth. We haven't got any cereal at the moment because I've been eating Weetabix for breakfast because I'm healthy and that's not going to work with this. But I'm going to get some Cheerios or something tomorrow and we're going to try out the Eat Me Crunchy. In theory, it's probably the greatest thing that's ever been invented. It's almost stream time. It's really cold out in the garage, hence the hoodie. Coffee first. Right, time for the start of an exciting new feature on the vlog, things you might not know about Kev. Okay, it starts with something you probably do know about me if you've been around for a little while. I'm a big, big Tim Ferriss fan. And one of the things Tim Ferriss recommends in his book, Four Hour Work Week, which I basically live my life by, um, is stop reading the news, stop paying attention to the news. If anything's really, really important, someone will tell you about it. Get all your news by asking everyone, what's going on? What do I need to know? And I've been doing this for about three or four years now. I don't watch the news, I don't read the news. I ignore news stuff online, generally, and get all of my news just by people telling me about it. Which is why I may have not taken this whole wind situation as seriously as I could earlier in the day. Because I didn't know that it was like a proper hurricane. And that there was actually danger and stuff in Ireland and the west of England. I only knew what I was told yesterday. Which was that it was going to be a bit windy near Manchester where we were. So if anyone is affected by it, I hope you didn't think I was flippant. I wasn't meant to be. I just didn't know how bad it was going to be. But actually standing out here now and feeding into the, the whole weird yellowy grey sky we had earlier as well. The wind is so strong, you can probably hear it. I've tried to get in a sheltered area, but still be outside so you can hear the wind gusting around behind me. The fences are rattling. And we're pretty close to the east coast of the UK. And this is a thing that's affecting the west coast. I can't imagine what it's like on the west coast. I hope everybody's okay. Dave, that was, I was being poignant, that wasn't the time to, mm, that dog. Okay, it's actually nowhere near as cold out here as I thought it was. So the hoodie's come off again. The hat has to stay on though, because the hair is getting unmanageable. Haircut this week, I think certainly, before we head down to London for Comic-Con at the end of next week, which I'm very excited about. I think all this sport Andy's doing, a combination of, a combination of having the weekend with short stay and I imagine him whipping him up all weekend and, Anna not being here, so he was probably a bit stressed out about Anna not being here over the weekend because he does have separation, separation issues with Anna. Um, but combination of that and all the sport and activities and the fact that he seems to be involved in himself in a full school day now. That thing I read out to you earlier, he's done some maths, he's done some literacy, he's done PE, he's done uh, music. If we think back to that timetable that I was so critical of back in August. That's pretty much a full day on that time <clears throat> on that timetable. So I think he's fully involving himself in a full day at school, plus the trauma of having a new person <laughs> introduce themselves into his life today and just going with it. That would have taken a lot out of him. But all of those things combined means he's just taken himself off to bed. It's not even half past eight yet. Normally Anna would take him up for a bath. About quarter to eight, he'd have a bath, have a story, get into bed. He disappeared off upstairs, probably about 10 past seven, quarter past seven, uh, to go to the toilet. And then we just thought he was sitting on his bed, reading or just being naked, which he sometimes does in his room. He likes to occasionally sit in his room naked. We don't mind him doing it. Five years ago, he'd wander around the whole house naked. So, you know, naked, restricted to one room, that's progress. But we went upstairs to give him his, well, Anna went upstairs to give him his bath, fast asleep. So, I'm not sure what time that means he's going to get up in the morning, but it certainly means whatever he's doing during the day is tiring him out. So we might be slowly edging closer towards a proper sleep schedule as well. 
which would be ace. I'm about to stream because I wasn't available yesterday because I was taking shorts back to the station as you saw. I don't know why I'm holding a pen. Uh, so we're going to call a day on the vlog a little bit early today so I can get on with this Football Manager stream. Um, if you have enjoyed today's vlog, please make sure you pop a like on there for me. Subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more. And thank you very much for watching.